What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pigger, host of the Paul Pigger Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Um, I just did a video for the Dizzle Lemon Gummy Taste Test, and I have to say that uh, <laughs> I'm definitely feeling that gummy. I'm not a lemon not a lemon fan, um, but uh, definitely feeling that gummy kicking it. Um, so I guess it... It would only be right that I give you an advertisement from Dizzle Brand Premium Luxury Liqueur before I get into this video about mass layoffs at the Bud Light bottling plants. All right, let's get into it. That Dizzle ain't no joke, got me addicted, ain't no coke. Let's just have a toast. Anybody want some smoke? I ain't gonna lie, I cannot get enough When Cali said I need another one Gonna have you coming back for more But go get it while it's hot For it be sold out in your stores That dizzle I really mean it Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur Mixed with agave, tequila, cognac And orange liquor mango mix just throw your Dizzle on ice, and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur, go to DizzleBrand.com, click on our locations, click on one of the top three website links. I recommend Emilio's Beverage. You must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included below that. It's locations in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and the number one selling state for Dizzle Brand right now, Arkansas Stand Up. Shouts out to Little Rock Obama and peoples with the scale break a punch as well. Help and push the Dizzle brand and be on the lookout. Of course, the Dizzle brand um, gummies. Go to DizzleNova.com and go to CampNovaOnline.com as well. And don't forget, of course, do you Dizzle, DizzleBrand.com. Okay, we're going to get into it. Bud Light plants, bottling plants shutting down. Um, I try to, you know, I try to tell people, man, that this wasn't just going to be a temporary situation. I try to see, because I'm a marketing guy. I'm an advertising guy. So it's my job to predict trends, to to see if, if a trend is going to be a short-term trend or a long-term trend. You know, and to see if something is actually going to be a trend once it, you know, a lot of people start doing it. And definitely um, the Bud Light boycott is the best boycott I've ever seen in my lifetime. My 44 years of living is the best one I've ever seen. But let's get into this video with uh, Tim Poole and the crew. Lost. Man, I want to say that again. Gummies. 600 people are losing their jobs because Bud Light demand is tanking. And you know what? So be it. Bud Light caused this problem. It is their fault. And so for those who have lost their jobs, you know, I'm sorry to hear it. But y'all need to point the finger at Bud Light, not anybody who doesn't want to buy the product. Yeah. Two bottling plants are shutting down because. No Let me chime in here right quick, real quick. Y'all need to point the finger at Bud Light. See, this is why time and time again, I will stress on this podcast as a business owner, you can't take a political side. Just ride the middle. If anything, you can't choose right or left. You got to ride the middle. You know, I, I talk like... You know, as the guy that runs a lot of the social media for Dizzle, you know, I just helped them set up where we could just post all of our accounts at once. You know, I handle the YouTube shorts. I handle um, the Facebook profile page. I handle, now that we got threads, I handle the threads. And I handle, um, what else do I handle? Uh, there's one other one I do. So YouTube shorts, the threads, Facebook profile page. And there's one other. Oh, there's one other one. I just can't think what it was. I think it is the Triller. Um, but we just created, you know, social media 
I, you know, I, I put a social media app so they can all just post all the platforms at once. But we had this talk, you know, like when it first started, like I was like, yo, Dizzle can never take a political stance. You know, like you can't choose a side. You can't choose a side. You can't just, this is the, this is the problem, man. When you take that stance, when you, when you take that stance that, oh, hey, my business is a Republican or my business is a Democrat, you're really saying screw half of your customers. You're saying fuck half of your customers. You're alienating half of your consumer base because it should be common knowledge and common sense that every almost every business, about 50% of their consumers are Republicans. Oh, no, 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 my bad. Let's, 40% of the are Republicans or 45% and 40 or 45% are liberals and Democrats. And then the other 10% is like libertarians and the middle, you know, which is me because I've never voted Republican in my life. And it's, it's funny how like people always try to label people as conservative and they've never voted Republican in their life just because their views might lean more conservative, especially nowadays. That's the thing. Like, you know, just because my views might lean a certain way doesn't mean I'm taking a political stance. Like I'm choosing a side until I actually vote for that side. I haven't chosen that side. And until I actually come out and endorse that side and say, yo, yes, uh, you know, my business is Republicans. No, like, it's just views at this point. Like, once you take that stance, though, that this is your political party that you choose, you're alienating half of your consumer base. Because you're not only alienating the conservatives, you're probably alienating the libertarians. Because libertarians are not too fond of liberals or conservatives. You know, you're probably alienating the independents, the People's Party. Um falls into probably the 10%, which is which uh, Cornell West is running as. And I would say Cornell West doesn't like liberals or uh, conservatives. And some of his views lean more conservative and some of his views lean more liberal, you know. But once you take that political stance, you just either endorse a political side or you vote for a political side and you let it be known, you're just alienating half of your consumer base. You know, that's why I like, you don't like, I try to keep all my businesses separate for one thing, you know, and Paul Pickett Podcast is separate from Promo Palace LLC, even, even though I do promote my brand, Promo Palace LLC on here. Never, I don't, I don't put no kind of flags on my website. Um, that's another thing, like even, um, I don't even think businesses should throw probably any flags out there on their websites and stuff. Cause, cause now all flags are controversial. U S flag has become controversial and the pride flag has become controversial. Let's keep it. Nobody's buying the bottles anymore. A decrease in demand means ain't nobody got a job for these people. You know, there is some collateral damage in that these people who had these jobs are going to be hurt by it. And I saw these stories, we've seen it for the past several months, where these companies are saying, please, please buy Bud Light because we, the, the distributors and the bottling plants and the shipping departments, we're going to lose our jobs. And it's like, yo, no, I won't do it. I'm sorry, man. Three months ago, this kicked off and y'all start should have started looking for new jobs right away when you yep. knew it was yep. getting bad. I am not going to buy Bud Light because there are factory workers who will be negatively impacted. I feel for those workers. I'm sorry this is happening, but I am not going to support this company. Bud Light destroyed their brand, refused to apologize. Yep. And so what have they done so far? Let me stop again. See, that's the whole issue with this. You can't alienate half of your consumer base and then not apologize to them. And then you try to double down on um, the wokeness. Then you try to backtrack and go Americana again. And it's like, you're just flip-flopping. Now, they, now, but like, 
has pissed off the woke side because they didn't because they they didn't um fully embrace it and didn't fully support it they try to flip-flop back to americana and then they double down on pride again it's it's just like it's a disaster it's a dumpster fire at this point you know it's like when we talk about dizzle dizzle the name dizzle when you think of dizzle you think of urban slang you think of snoop dog you think of that so how does dizzle like it's like bud light was trying to reach like they were trying to reach this whole other fan base and consumer base but they didn't care about they didn't care about um offending or alienating the base they had i mean they clearly said it when they said we're trying to get away from the frat boy beer image well that means you're just trying to alienate or offend the consumers you have just to appease to a bunch of consumers you don't have like they were trying to like they're trying to get a piece of consumer base that won't be able to buy a beer for another seven, seven years. You're talking about miscalculation, you know? So this was like, I, right, well, how do we not just be known as a, um, black only, uh, liquor or a hood liquor or urban only liquor? Well, you don't get political and we probably just simple as, getting a country singer to do a commercial since we got a lot of hip hop commercials. It's probably as simple as that getting a country singer, you know, an up and coming country singer to do a diesel commercial or getting a, you know, some poppy white girl to do a diesel commercial or a rock band to do a diesel commercial. It's probably just that simple. You know, but you don't, we don't have to get into politics. We don't have to take a political stance. Um, you know, Dizzle is all about the paper. We're all about the sales, the money. And Dizzle is for blacks, whites, Asians, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Haitians. Anybody. It, it, it's not, it's, it, you know, it's not just for one race of people, even though some people, the name, you know, you think of Dizzle, you just, like I say, you think of Snoop Dogg. So it's just really about marketing and strategies. Showing people, hey, Dizzle is, it could be for any everybody. It could, you know, if you like cognac, if you like tequila, try Dizzle. If you like mango, you like orange flavors and alcohol, try Dizzle, you know. But we don't like... Taking a political stance is the worst thing any business could ever do. Let's keep it moving. Put out these ridiculous commercials. That's right. Bud Light has a new commercial where it's a bunch of men grunting. Seriously? Nice try, Bud Light. You are not going to recover from this. No. Nope. Especially with Dylan Mulvaney coming out and reigniting the story once again, criticizing the brand. But this is yeah, that's another thing. They try to say, oh, well, this wasn't really an advertising advertisement. Um, we just sent one can to one person. Yeah, but it was a sponsorship. And sponsorships are advertisements. So, and Dylan Mulvaney's like, well, hold up, hold up. This was a sponsorship. This was supposed to be me promoting the brand and advertising the brand. You know, so, yeah, you, you chose to... Uh, take a stance and choose a sponsor who um, is part of an issue that's very, very controversial right now. Very political, politicized right now. Um, it's an issue that a lot of people would never, ever accept and never agree with in society. The transgenderism. I would never accept or agree with transgenderism. Never, ever. Not in a million years where I ever accept it or agree with it. So there's a lot of people out there that feel that way. And you've taken that stance, you know, it's like, I think right now the most controversial thing in America is transgenderism. 
I think transgenderism is overshadowing everything because the indoctrination in the schools and trying to force it upon kids in schools and things of that nature. So let me go ahead and play a little bit more. What but we see. And right now we have more news in the culture war front, a lot of news in the culture war front, and it is victories across the board. Ben and Jerry's is now finally under fire because they insulted Independence Day, as did several liberals. Well, Ben and Jerry's has always been this ridiculous woke brand, even though they're owned by Unilever, a massive multinational conglomerate. But now people are finally saying enough. We are not going to partake in these ridiculous and awful brands with garbage messaging. And so here we are. And so here we are. And on that front with the culture war, we also have the massive success for the opening day of Sound of Freedom. Have you heard about this movie? Jim Caviezel I'm gonna plays the role of Tim Ballard, a man who is stopping child trafficking. And the movie hit $10 million in sales for their opening day in a it's 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 a big deal. It's a big deal. So this is where we all wrap it together. And you know what? Liberals, I'm going to react to a video with that too. And I'm going to react to a video with the Ben and Jerry's. But the liberals pushing back on the sound of freedom. The fact that they're nitpicking like, well, it's a little embellished. Makes me question the character of, of any. I question the character of anybody who pushes back on the movie Sound of Freedom. Because it's about trafficking kids. I mean, if if that's all you could come up with, I have the question: Are you what? Are you supporting trafficking kids and pedophilia? Because the idea that anybody will push back on that movie, I mean, I know it's America. There's some sick, sadistic people out there, but gosh, anybody pushing back on that movie is crazy. And you know what? I don't think I need to see more of this video. I'm going to say it time and time again. If you're a business, you choose to take a political stance, endorse any political side, or vote for any political side and let it be known. Be prepared to lose half your consumer base. And don't be mad at the consumers and call them bigots and homophobes and transphobes and racists. When you lose that consumer base because you chose to alienate half of your consumer base. It, that's just common sense and common knowledge. And if there's any business person that doesn't know that, I mean, all these people and all these big businesses with all these big college degrees, if they don't know that, I mean, they're dumbing in a bag of bricks. And I feel like a freaking genius right now, you know, because that should be common sense. You don't take a political side in a business. Whatever your business is, like if you make pizzas, just focus on making good quality pizzas. You know, if you're in the market of advertising business like me, just focus on provide providing um, results and high quality services. You know, if you are in the burger business, just just focus on making a good ass burger. I don't want to go and, you know, that's the thing. People don't want to be lectured when they go to buy a slice of pizza or go buy a burger or, you know, go pay for advertising services or go get their tires uh, changed or the oil. You know, I don't want to, like, nobody wants to go get their oil changed and be lectured, you know, have virtue signaling thrown in their face when they're just trying to get their oil changed. You know, when people are trying to make business transactions, they're just trying to make business transactions. They're not trying to be lectured and shamed in the process. You know, and trying to shame somebody and to go watch movies and buy your products, that's a terrible marketing strategy as well. How about just focus on making a good movie, putting out a good product, providing a good quality service? How about doing that? You know? In my business, I always try to give my clients the best advice as possible. If they don't listen to me, that's on them. That's on them. It's my job to provide the best advice possible, you know, provide the best quality services, not to sit there and tell them, hey, you know, um, you should vote Republican or you should vote Democrat or what do you think about abortion or affirmative action or, you know, 
When people want to be lectured, they'll ask to be lectured. Trust me. So once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out.